welcome to School of Dive Homeschooling. If you're looking to improve your session skills, learn a few tunes and a Gaelic song, then you're in the right place. This is how these lessons are going to work. First of all, you will hear the guys playing through a tune and then either Angus, Alistair or Gabe will teach it to you. Then we'll hand over to either Ross or Yogi who will take you through the chords. Following that, everyone will play all together at full speed. Finally, you'll hear the melody without the accompaniment so that the chord players can get creative and try out some variations. You can pause this video at any time and skip through any bits you find boring, like this whole intro maybe. Now, three things to remember, so I hope you're paying attention. Have a great time, play like no one is listening, and like and subscribe. So let's dive right in. Here's Angus and Ross teaching Fakafi Vok by Alan MacDonald. So, let's get started with Fakafi Vok. And we're not going to leave the poor pipes alone on this occasion. I'm going to teach it on the small pipes. Um, you can play whatever instrument you'd like, uh, but that's what I'm going to play. So, Fakafi, it's a real in D, and we are starting on the D. So, the first phrase in the first part goes like this. <laughs> the two bars down um, into s little bars on their own and the first one's going to go like this. first phrase um, so go over that a few times as as long as you need and we'll start on the second phrase so it starts on the F sharp this time <laughs> the 
two first two phrases. So let's try and play that whole line together. the first line so the next phrase the third phrase exactly the same as the first first phrase in the first line so play it over with me One, two. that last bar that changes from the first from the first line so just go over that a couple more times <laughs> so that's the whole first part so let's play it nice and slow <laughs> the first part let's get straight into the second part um, we're gonna start on a C sharp for this for this first phrase so I'll play through the first phrase <laughs> triplet or you can just play a just one a that's just to let you know i'm playing a burl on those a's so the second phrase up to the e for this one <laughs> Time. 
that's the first line of the second part. Now, the second line is pretty much identical to the second line in the first part. It's just the first bar, there's one note change. And if you remember, going back to the first part, it goes... putting together those phrases we've learned some of them already so not to try and relearn them so go over those phrases and then we'll try and play the second part all together <laughs> So there you go, that's Fakafit Bach or Leave the Poor Place Alone by Alan MacDonald. Um, good to practice some of these uh, piping ornamentations if you want to, if you're playing a fiddle or something else, you can practice the play triplets on the A's and B's. <laughs> Let's go and have a wee listen to the chords now. Okay, we're going to get some chords on. Now, as always, I really encourage you to watch the first half of this video. And try and get as much of the tune as you can. I say that in all these videos, but you really want to learn these tunes. You're not even just getting them in your head. You want to hear where they're going and get as much of the notes as you can, even if you're just picking out the basics of it. Uh, because we're going to break it down into these little phrases. It's the same when the boys are teaching them, they, they break it down phrase by phrase, and that's what we were looking for, is, is sections and, and phrases. That's how we portion it up. Because a lot of the time these things just repeat, and this is a great example of this, it, it's just the little things just re occur in different parts of the tune. So once you get the pattern, it becomes actually quite straightforward. A banger of a tune. And uh, yeah, the, but there's, a little, there's little tricks to help you and piece it together really and remember it. So we're in D major. D, G and A are our three chords with there's gonna be a bit of E minor feature in this and um, if you like E minor you won't have long to wait. It's gonna happen fairly fairly soon. So the first line of the tune is almost identical to the second line of the tune. Uh, 
as you hear, is just that very ending. That's different. So all we need, you know, we just work out something for the first line, and then we're almost there. Um, that's that's our first part. It's just those two lines. So um, the first the first phrase. I'm going to break that into two little bits because chord wise it, it's two two chords. So the first bit. I mean, you can see I hardly. You can play almost all that in the D chord shape, so that tells us that that's mostly notes of a D chord. So that tells us that's our chord D. Pretty strong indicator of playing a D there. Then the, the second bar is now it's not so obvious finger wise on the guitar, but you've got E and B and up to the G. So that's that's the three chords of the E minor tune. Now. So E minor is our second chord, and because these I'm seeing these as blocks, like a bar block of that, a bar block of E minor. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna slap that. You know, I'm gonna rhythmically mark that. That's that's what. That's how I chunk that tune through, in, you know, in sections, and it being the blocks it and marks those, those little bits, those little phrases. Um, now the, the next, the next phrase, the the end of that line is the. Now, that. It's almost like that finishes on a, on a on a question. It's inconclusive. So I always think of these as two people having a conversation. The first person, it's kind of like a question that they've got. It leaves it, you know, what's going on here. And this, the, the answer is... And it's, it's not conclusive, you know, it leaves it hanging. So the first person, possibly unsatisfied with that as a response, just repeats their question again. But the second person's ready this time and responds with a definite. There you go, that's you told. So, that we've got the F up to the D. So, the F up to the A, sorry, the high A. So, that's you know giving us a strong D, D chord. But then we want to get for that hanging bit. To like sit it, the G chord is always a good way. That's what we're aiming to finish that line with. Um, we want to make this interesting to bring it back to the to the to the beginning of the second line again. And that G leaves it hanging, leaves it in a suspense that, that waits to be answered. So we've got a D, and then we go back up to that high A. Because we're coming down in A7 when we come down from there. A, G, E, C sharp. That's the four notes in the A7 chord. So, And then there's our... There's our G to leave it hanging. And then, of course, we'll go back. The second line is the exact same phrase at the beginning of the first line. The same question, as it were. Same notes, so we've got the same chords. And then we're looking for the conclusion here. So, so we're going to go straight up to the A this time. Because it's, you know, we've, we've got the C sharp there, we've got the A, we've got that G again, so. And then there's our G. And concluding the D. So that. That whole second line is same question. And G and D. So yeah, we're gonna chunk those and the only thing to point out there is that D at the end. That whole part, that first part is gonna repeat. So certainly the first time we play it, which is gonna be, you know, halfway through before going into the repeat, we want to hold that D back so it doesn't because we're gonna start on it as well. So we want to um, so the second line, and G, and then you know the 
the D is forming the very end of the phrase and it's going to be the beginning of the next one. So we're playing it over the end of the bar and the start of the first bar. You'll hear what I mean when we play it fast in the session video at the end. So let's just go through that A part with Angus on the pipes and uh, I'll see you back here for the B part. So now the B part, the B part of this tune, this is, is where it gets quite quite clever. So we're um, it starts on an A chord, starts on the five chord. It doesn't change key; it just starts on a different chord. And then after that, it's almost like it's the same. It's all the same bits from the first part, but they just happen in a different place. Um, hopefully, you'll see what I mean. So the very first bit. You know the, the three notes of an A chord. That's your A triad. So you know that's a very there you go A chord for a first bar. And then after that, the next bit is, which is the same as our first bar in the first part, which is then followed by. And then, so it's taking that first three bars of the very first part. And it's just moved them all up one bar. So we've got this A at the beginning. And then but, um, so it's it's the same notes, it's just that's they've just moved it all up one. It's great. Really clever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the A for the first because that's what the, the notes are telling us. And then the second bar is a D, because we've already worked out all the notes from that chord. We already know that's an E minor because we've worked it out from the first part. And then this bar we're going to just play slightly different chords for because we want to want that A G to bring it back to a D for the for the last line. So A over that. You know it's a good solid A anyway we've got the A, the G, the C sharp and the E. And then, so there's the A and the G. So that first line of the second part is A, D, E minor, A, G. And now the last line is exactly the same as the second line of the first part. So it's you know back to back to that formula again. So now we want to and that on the repeat when that repeats we want to conclude that on the G at the end of that line more strongly because the next chord is the A because we're going back into the beginning of that part again. So just a quick note on that. So A and D. a good strong lead back into the the repeat of that part and then at the end back on the D we're going to be going back to the first part so we're going to do the same kind of shuffle that D over the over the part so 
have a wee yeah, have a wee look at that. Go back and look at the at the at the tune with Angus and look at the, the, the notes if you want to look at the dots and see if you see once you crack that wee formula. It's the same little bars of music are just inserted in a slightly different place, which is great. So it's just take that, take that, move it there, move it there, and we just play the same chords. So you have to listen out for those bits and then that's the chord we play. So there only is like three little bits and you just have to figure out where they are and then you're you're home and dry and you've got it. Uh, so let's play the second part of that with Angus. Two videos, two session videos at the end for you to play along with. There's one of us all playing together, and that's the chords I'll be playing. And uh, as always, there's another video where well, I'll just have the boys playing the melody, and it won't have any chords in it at all. So that's your chance to play along with that, try those chords, try some different chords, try some different ideas, um, have another look at the notes and the melody, and you maybe you want to hear a B minor in there somewhere, or maybe you want to hear a G instead of E minor. There's lots of things you can do. Just have a play around and. Uh, You've got free reign to go for it. I give you my permission to do absolutely anything you want in the video without any chords. So just to have a go and, uh, and enjoy yourself. <laughs> 